I was born in a village called Gandu. There was no access to electricity and uh, a hard, very hard access to clean drinking water. Um, so there was no school. And my father wanted me to attend education. His expectation was simply to send his son to school so that I can learn to read and write and come back and help him to read his letter and write some letter for him. Through uh, this school, I earned a scholarship which brought me to, to Germany, where I then grabs the chance at a heart to study architecture. We have a big tree in the heart, in the center of the village, which provides shade. And during the day, multiple activities happening there. It can be even a kindergarten. So the adult will be talking and the kids will be playing. The elders will be discussing. But sometimes it becomes a little hospital when you have a vaccination campaign or it becomes a school. So I wanted to bring this spirit, this element in culture in Burkina Faso here using the tree as a reference and with all the activities happening there. The entry points are very simple. We use perforated wall and that huge canopy, so a tree-like canopy. We have a, a wooden locks that we use, cutting them like straight cut to create a component that we put together. So keeping openings which allow the wind to go through and the canopy is elevated at the distance to the walls which allow natural ventilation. In the center of the pavilion, the canopy end up as a funnel to collect water. So I wanted with my team to celebrate water as the most important element and a vital good. I'm trying always to see what is the most available uh, material and how can I use this in a very intelligent way. Using the steel was just to give a longevity to the structure and then to have like an overspan is just to use the chance being working in London having access to to engineering firms such as Ecom give you the chance to explore what I have been in doing in Gando or Burkina Faso um, to push this structure to the limit. I also try to use a color in the material used to protect the wood against weathering. Here we use indigo blue. Blue is so important in my village because that is the color of celebration, you know. If a young man has a date, you dress blue. And here, having the chance to do something, to demonstrate my architecture in the heart of uh, London at Hyde Park, I wanted to show my building in that best color. I will say for the pattern, for the wall element, I look at a lot to Africa and then to textile. I was uh, keen to use wood and shape the space in the way that people think, wow, it looks like it is a textile, but it isn't, it is wood, very solid, but it appears like a textile, almost light and flexible. Being in Berlin was key for my work. Uh, you know, as there is a lot of things that you can see in Berlin, and you know that Mies van der Rohe was living in Berlin, and I was inspired by his work a lot. If you know the rationalism in his work, you then you will understand why I always try to, to use the material in a very rational way, you know. In Burkina, I'm forced to work with scarcity. Being a vibrant place for art, Berlin influences, of course, the way you think uh, uh, architecture, how you could shape it. It helps you to just come with the structure that is harmonious. In terms of architecture, of course, the training is European purely Western, what I got. But I tried to translate it for the need of the people, to get the structure fit to the context. It's something new that I'm trying to create, 
which is not really totally Western, using local material to create something that is really new and for them modern is a very exciting. Right now I'm working on two buildings in Burkina Faso. The one is in Kudugu, is a high school, and another one is in Lewo, a city at the border of Ghana, is a clinic with housing for staff. In Kudugu, uh, we use laterite, laterite bricks that we excavate from the ground, and then we use eucalyptus wood. This material is used for scaffolding in construction site or just to burn. And I try to use them for the first time in a very different way, to use it as a layer for the school. I wanted to increase the climate inside the classroom using an element that I didn't use properly before. It is a wind tower, which is good to suck the air out of the building at the same time to increase the ventilation. In Lewo, we created boxes to just make the windows deeper. You need light, but you cannot really see the people immediately. But in Lewo, I try to create more intimacy for the people that will be living there. And so it's like an introvert project, and that is different to my other project. In Lewo and Kudugu, we recruited local and we train them to be part of the construction process, which is great. We take them with us to the next site. It's, we are already on the way to just move to other sites with these people that has become part of my team now. I see the strong relationship with Massima and the women in Gando and it makes me be happy. Women are playing a big role inside this pavilion that I want to be inclusive, welcoming and connecting, you know. To have this pavilion, which was inspired by this tree, the figure of the tree in the landscape, to see how people just embrace the structure, people accept, people just use it, is unbelievable, it's great. So I was hoping to have that feeling, but it is happening and it is wonderful. You see then, one corner people just sit, the kids are playing using the playground we designed it and then in the other corner you see people sitting, leaning back the wall and watching the nature and suddenly people sitting in the benches of the park and they interact, you know, suddenly it's like a visual con connection, it's wonderful. At night time, young people often try to, to go up and see where is light in the village and to move toward that light. If you go so, you will find there is a celebration. Here, our pavilion should be like a beacon. Light goes out and then everyone will feel invited.